Hello, I am Terry Moxon and I have been interested in agates for over 30 years with a particular interest in the question of agate genesis. My own university training has been, at different times, in chemistry and geology. The stills that follow show some of the less well-known facts about agates and I hope that you find them interesting and informative. Over the years I have studied agates from around the world. My collection is around 2,000 pieces, although many of the samples are fragments. However, these are adequate for my work as sections of the agates are either crushed to a powder or made into thin sections. I have written a new book entitled Studies on Agate and details can be found on my website www.agateworld.co.uk The first image shows a collection of quartz minerals and each sample, ignoring the few impurities, can be described by the same chemical name that is silicon dioxide. Silicon and oxygen the most abundant elements in the Earth's crust and when they combine they can take on many different forms. Here you are looking at a large quartz crystal, chert, flint and a jasper pebble. As the quartz crystal can be seen with the naked eye it is known as macrocrystalline quartz. The quartz crystals in chert generally require a microscope to be seen and chert is one member of the microcrystalline quartz family. Strictly, flint is chert that formed around a hundred million years ago in Western European chalk. However, outside Europe, the names flint and chert are often used interchangeably. The jasper pebble is impure and consists of hematite, that's an oxide of iron, clay and fine grained quartz. Image 2 shows pale lilac chalcedony and agates from Botswana, Brazil and Mexico. Although agates are found throughout the world, there are only a few countries that have sufficient material to export and these three countries are all agate exporters. Agate and chalcedony are also microcrystalline, but the appearance and texture differs from their microcrystalline cousins a flint and chert. Examination of a thin section under a polarizing microscope will confirm visible differences between chalcedony and chert. Chalcedony and agate have a fibrous texture whereas the quartz in chert, flint and jasper is generally granular. Agate is simply banded chalcedony. It's not too difficult to make a thin section of agate in chapter 2 of my new book, Studies on Agate, I describe techniques for making rock thin sections. This chapter is available as a free download from the website www.agateworld.co.uk In chapter 4 of the book, I discuss what agate information can be obtained from X-ray data. Image 5 shows two diffractograms. The first has been obtained from an Iranian agate found in a 50 million year old host rock. This can be compared to a similar diffractogram from a Lake Superior agate whose host is a thousand million years older. The first thing to notice is that both sets of signals are very similar and this signal print is always given by quartz. Look carefully and you will notice an extra signal at around 22 degrees in the Iranian agate. This is due to another form of silica called cristobalite. Nevertheless, all the quartz signals are in identical positions. X-ray signals are as diagnostic of a particular mineral as a fingerprint for a human being. While agate is a very pure form of silica, it is not all due to quartz. Another form of silica called morganite is usually present in both agate and chert. 
However, the morganite content in agate is rarely greater than around 25%. Samples of morganite can be found at Mogan in Gran Canaria, where the morganite content can be as much as 85%. Image 6 shows a collection of morganite samples from Gran Canaria, each with the white powder coating that contains the highest morganite content. Most minerals are polycrystalline and what appears to be a single crystal is in fact made up of a number of individual building units called crystallites. One of the most interesting aspects of agate is the ability of the crystallites to develop with age. So, after approximately 50 million years, the crystallites in agate have doubled in size. The sketches in image 7 show two identical crystals composed of different size crystallites. X-ray diffraction allows the size of these crystallites to be measured and these have been shown to vary with the age of the host rock. The electron microscopes are particularly powerful at examining surfaces up to a hundred thousand times or even greater. Image 8 shows a block of four micrographs taken with a scanning electron microscope. Start at the centre of the lowest magnification, that is at the top left at 400 times, and follow through each increasing magnification to see detail of the central region. The electron microscope allows a rough differentiation between agates from host rocks younger or older than around 45 million years. There are many forms of spectroscopy, and in the book I look at visible, infrared, and Raman spectroscopy. Each technique is used to identify various aspects of agate character. It is not often appreciated that agate does contain free water molecules trapped within the crystal structure and infrared causes the water molecules in agate to vibrate. Image 9 shows the differences in the 1.6% water content in the 89 million year old New Zealand agate compared with the 0.6% water content in the 1100 million year old Lake Superior agate. The water differences are demonstrated by the broad hump in the middle of the plot. Under normal earth surface conditions agates cease developing at around 300 million years. Agates from hosts aged around 1100 million years characteristically appear to be similar to agates from hosts aged around 300 million years. However, if agates are heated and or subjected to pressure during their lifetime, then they do change the character of the physical properties. Image 13 shows two agates that are separated by 3,000 million years, but each have been heated by natural thermal events. The agates would be classified as poor quality, but both have a fascinating story to tell. The origin of agate has been a topic for discussion amongst earth scientists for over 300 years. Much comment that is presently available can only be regarded as speculation. Nevertheless, there is some valid experimental science behind a number of conclusions. It seems most likely that agate develops following a series of transformations starting from amorphous silica. Image 14 shows an electron micrograph of silica sinta with a form of silica called opal C or cristobalite. Cristobalite can transform into quartz and has been found in relatively young agate as shown in image 5. Studies on agate introduces the reader to some scientific techniques that have been used to examine agate over the last 20 years. In the book, methodology has been kept to a minimum and the discussion concentrates on the results that have been found. In particular, experimentation has allowed comment on the agate structure and its genesis.